Hey friends, welcome back to the Guitar Max channel. And look guys, I would love to stop talking about Dean guitars. I would like to just wake up in the morning and enjoy my tea and move on to other things in life. But it looks like that's not going to happen today. So the latest issue with Dean guitars has to do with the fallout from their lawsuit between them and Gibson. The judge presiding over that case has now ordered Dean to stop production of several of their key models. These are, in some cases, guitar models that they have been making for decades. Also, I have some follow-up information regarding Evan Rubinson being kicked out as CEO of Armadillo Enterprises slash Dean Guitars by his own mother and being sued by her as well. I've now been able to confirm some details about that, some things that I talked about in a previous video. I've been able to confirm some of those things and also somebody slipped me some insider information that I'm going to share with you as well. So we're going to go over all the details of this stuff, but real quick guys, if you enjoy videos like this, checking out cool new guitars and also staying up on all the latest news in the guitar universe, and you have not already subscribed, please consider subscribing right now. Okay, so first let's go over the latest news, which has to do with the judge that has ordered Dean Guitars to stop producing certain guitars. Now, I've got this article up here. We're going to go through this and figure out all the details. But as usual, I've got a link for this, the original article, down in the video description below if you want to check that out. But let's go ahead here and take a look at this. So this is from Guitar.com. And look at this headline. Judge orders Dean to cease production of Grand Sport, Dean V, and Dean Z guitars following Gibson trademark verdict. The article starts off here, a final judgment from the presiding judge in the Gibson versus Dean case has ordered Dean's parent company, Armadillo Enterprises, to cease production and marketing of the Luna Athena 501, the Dean Grand Sport, the Dean V, the Dean Z, and any guitars using or advertised with the word hummingbird. The order follows a jury verdict that found Dean Guitars liable for both counterfeiting and trademark infringement on a number of Gibson's designs. This final judgment seems to be in contrast to what Dean's outgoing CEO and president, Evan Rubinson, expected to happen following the ruling. We spoke to him shortly after the jury verdict arrived, and he stated, Quote, we have no plans to drop the Dean V and Z guitars, nor the Dean EVO headstock design, as the jury found no trademark liability on any of those. Now, the timing of his comment there is very, very interesting, and I'll get to uh, some details a little bit later in the video about that with the sort of insider information that I have. So let's go ahead and, and look further on in the article here. It goes on here. Rubinson also told us that, quote, the case is by no means over, and, quote, Gibson may potentially appeal the verdict despite their touted victory. While this is still technically possible, it's almost certain that Gibson will not appeal. The final judgment is ultimately in Gibson's favor. Not only does it order Armadillo to cease production and advertising of some of its most popular guitars, and that's a key thing there, but it also rules that all legal costs of the case fall on on Armadillo and its investment partner, Concordia. Gibson is requesting legal costs totaling $335,000. Now, the article goes on here uh, with some statements from Gibson. It's pretty typical stuff. They're just talking about how pleased they are with the outcome of the case. Uh, if we scroll down here uh, a little further towards the end of the article, it says, the jury verdict found that the damages suffered by Gibson as a direct result of the infringement were, were minimal. This was, I talked about this when the, uh, the court case was originally resolved, uh, totaling only $4,000, which Armadillo and Concordia must now pay Gibson within 30 days. However, the six-figure sum of legal fees that they are now required to pay massively changes what the financial impact of this case could be on Armadillo. Because remember, Gibson was seeking millions of dollars in damages uh, th with the original lawsuit, the original court case. And uh, when it came out in the end, they were only awarded $4,000. So it was almost, you know, in some ways, it was a big victory for Dean Guitars. But now we're seeing how this all plays out in two big ways. One is now Dean 
because they lost the lawsuit, they have to pay all the court fees or legal expenses, which are significant. And then, of course, the other thing is because they were found to be infringing on the rights of Gibson, they have now been ordered to cease production of the guitars that infringed on Gibson's rights. And at the very end of the article here, it says the judgment comes at a turbulent time for Armadillo as CEO and President Evan Rubinson has departed the company and is now facing a lawsuit that alleges he embezzled $420,000 from his late father's company, Thoroughbred Music Incorporated. He has denied the allegations completely. More on that in a second. Now, they briefly touched on this in the article, but the big thing here is that these guitars that uh, they've been ordered to stop producing, these are some of the most classic, legendary Dean guitars. The Dean V and the Dean Z, which is what you would typically call an Explorer-type guitar, these are classic Dean guitars. They have been making these guitars for decades. And they have lots of different models, lots of different variations on these guitars. So, you know, if they are losing the ability to market and even make these guitars, this is going to be a big hit on the company's income, at least from my understanding. Now, let's take a quick look at the Dean website because there's something that's, that's uh, worth pointing out here that's pretty, pretty important. So if we go over to the Dean Guitars website and we're looking at the V series here, now this is one of the ones that they've been ordered to stop making. Look how many different models they have here. Okay, they've got a whole bunch of these different guitars. And what's, uh, what's interesting is if we go to electrics and shapes, Dean also makes a guitar called the Vengeance. Now this is also a V model, but this one is sort of like the modernized version. It has the very sharp edge, you know, sharp corners, essentially. Uh, and they make a similar one called the Zero, which is the Z, the, the sort of modernized Z model, and the Z being the Explorer type body shape, another one they've been ordered to stop making. So from my understanding, the lawsuit and, and this uh, order from the judge is only limited to uh, the traditional versions of these guitars, if you know what I mean. So I, as far as I know, they can still market and produce the, the Dean Zero and the Dean Vengeance, even though the body shapes are similar, you know, they're modernized, they've got the sharp edges on them, slightly different angles. You know, they're considered different enough to where they don't fall under this judge's order and then they were not originally involved in the lawsuit. So as far as I know, they can keep selling these guitars at least. Okay guys, now let's talk about the status of who is CEO over at Armadillo Enterprises. That's the parent company that owns Dean Guitars. This is essentially what I was talking about in my previous video. This lawsuit that was filed uh, against Evan Rubinson, the now former CEO of Dean Guitars, a uh, lawsuit filed by his mother. And at the time, I was not able to officially confirm who was the CEO of Armadillo if it wasn't Evan and that kind of stuff. But now that stuff has all been verified. So now I can say with confidence that Evan Rubinson is no longer CEO and uh, his mother, Pamela Rubinson, is now the, uh, the CEO of Armadillo Enterprises. Now that lawsuit between them, where she alleges that he has embezzled a whole bunch of money from the company, that lawsuit is still ongoing. So we'll see what happens with that. But as of now, Pamela Rubinson is the CEO of Dean Guitars. And what's very, very interesting here, uh, somebody sent me an email, and I'm not going to say who this was, of course, but they sent me an email and they forwarded me a copy of a letter which was sent out when all these big changes took place. And the fascinating thing here uh, is that this letter was sent out, I believe, around June 10th. And it's a letter from Pamela Rubinson basically announcing that she is now CEO of the company. She's going to be taking over and you know, it's typical corporate stuff. Oh, I'm looking forward to working with everybody and that kind of thing. The, the letter actually doesn't say very much of significance other than that she is now CEO. Um, but the timing of it is very, very interesting because like I said, it came out, it, the letter was sent out around June 10th and that is almost exactly one week after the outcome of the Gibson lawsuit. The Gibson lawsuit came to a close and then Evan Rubinson made some public statements when he, at the time when the lawsuit 
came to an end, you know, Evan Rubinson was still the CEO of the company and he made some public statements talking about, oh no, we're not going to stop making these guitars. It's no big deal. We basically won the case. You know, let's celebrate. He made these public statements and about a week after that, bam, he's out and now his mom is in and she's CEO. So was that the final nail in the coffin for Evan Rubinson as CEO? I don't know. It's possible it was just a coincidence, but the timing, nonetheless, is very interesting. Okay, guys, now look. So, although there has been a lot of trouble, like basically nothing but trouble lately for Dean Guitars, I still want to be positive overall when it comes to this company. Because, yes, they're losing the ability to create some of their most iconic uh, guitars. And over the past five or so years, they've pretty much lost almost all of their endorsing artists. But they still have some cool guitars and some things that they brought out more recently, which I think are pretty promising. Like, if you go to the website here, the MD24 series, you know, this is like a straightforward 24 fret shred guitar, humbuckers, Floyd Rose, they've got them in some cool like 80s inspired colors. This is kind of along the same lines as what Charvel or Jackson are currently doing. And I have not played one of these guitars. I don't really know uh, you know, I haven't done a review, I don't know how they are really, but they look pretty cool and they seem like a pretty good value. And, and I think if Dean Guitars is going to crawl out of the pit that they're currently in, I think this is kind of the direction that they're going to have to go in. Maybe they can get some new artist to sign on, but whether or not they do, I think they're really going to have to turn to innovation and new designs as their path forward. BC Rich did that a few years ago, right? They were under new ownership and they kind of revisited some of their classic designs but then gave them totally modern makeovers you know up to the build quality a little bit of you know for some of their cheaper stuff and came up with all these cool new finishes and this kind of thing and they really were able to turn to a new chapter in the company's history talking about classic designs and the company's legacy like it's nice to acknowledge that stuff and it's cool but if your legacy is now tarnished by this, uh, this lawsuit with Gibson, where they're basically saying that, hey, you've been infringing on Gibson's rights for decades, and so you're not able to create those guitars anymore. Now that that legacy, I think, has, has really been tarnished by the lawsuit, it's going to have to be new models. It's going to have to be, you know, new models, new artists, innovation. That's where I think the company can go to really you know, build a new name for themselves and a new, a new reputation. Okay, but what do you guys think of all of this stuff? As usual, I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below. Now, I'm gonna have links for these articles and everything I was talking about uh, down in the video description below, the articles I was checking out, as well as my previous videos on Dean Guitars. That'll all be down in the video description. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.